Chapter 201 Betrayal Translator Transan Editor Transan There were a series of misfortunate events. Joy Pavilion claimed that the tenth young master had killed someone without rhyme or reason. They had no idea who the rescuer was. He was highly skilled but he was so timid that he dared not show up. I have no grudges against Joy Pavilion. Why would I want to kill Tang Ji? Shang Guan Ayu asked angrily. She hated being framed. It was second only to being betrayed. Aren't you the tenth young master? When the killer ran away, he said, get your revenge from the tenth young master. You people from Kuan society want to occupy Hope Alley. So you're attacking Joy Pavilion first, isn't that right? We could, but we would never do that for fear of the consequences. Many people huddled together in Joy Pavilion, criticizing Shangguan Ayu. Ji Yu Shenwei felt that with the dwarf immortal Peng's death, the personalities of the disciples seemed to have changed. The white-robed immortal Peng seemed to have lost the ability to control their minds. Shangguan Ayu blushed and waved her saber. So what if it's me? If you want revenge, come and get it from me. The disciples of Joy Pavilion eagerly prepared for attack again. That madman Wu who had once attacked spoke from behind the tree again. They didn't kill anyone. I saw everything. I've been following them. Let them go. That voice was pleading. Ji Yu Shenwei and Shangguan Ayu looked at each other again. Both of them were experts in light work kung fu and light killers, were vigilant. Yet, they had not realized that they had been followed. Madman Wu, don't you understand? The tenth young master had sent men to assassinate Tang Ji. These two had definitely come to check out the situation. Madman Wu did not seem to understand. He kept repeating, let them go. The people of Joy Pavilion were befuddled. They simply had to convince Madman Wu. If not, they could simply argue indefinitely. Ji Yu Shenwei did not intend to listen to this nonsense in such times of danger. He grasped Shangguan Ayu's hand firmly and jumped onto the nearest peach tree with his light work kung fu, out through the hole created by Madman Wu. Shangguan Ayu threw a tantrum and wanted to argue her ground. However, she was pulled away from the scene quickly by Slave Huan. Behind them, the voices of the disciples of Joy Pavilion rose and fell in anguish. After a while, the two had run out far and stepped onto firm ground again. They left the peach trees like a wisp of smoke. What on earth went on back there? Shangguan Ayu asked, panting. A bunch of madmen. Ha ha. That could have been a trap laid by someone. Shangguan Ayu did not laugh. Someone had posed as one of the tenth young master's killers and assassinated Tang Ji. That person did this to provoke a fight between the tenth young master and Joy Pavilion. Clearly, whoever did this wanted to use Joy Pavilion for his agenda. Shangguan Ayu knew clearly in her heart who the culprit was. So it seems someone must have been following us all this while. Ji Yu Shenwei nodded. If this hadn't been a trap but simply a misunderstanding, then that fight would have been humorous. Shangguan Ayu tried to force a laughter, wanting to express how she was not afraid of anything. Something however, was approaching them speedily, counterattacking with sword and dagger at the same time. It was two leaves in the scattered moonlight. The two could faintly see the silhouette of the leaves. Someone walked out from behind the tree. He walked up to the youth without the sound of footsteps. It was as if he was floating on grass. The two leaves that had been hit flew up again and returned to this person's hands. Those machete skills aren't bad. Your sword craft is first rate. That sounded like Madman Wu. His voice still sounded a little timid. One leaf was almost cleaved into half and the other was entirely intact. Ji Yu Shenwei had struck too quickly. The force of his weapon had retracted from one of the leaves too quickly and thus did not cause any damage. 
This person was above 30 years of age. He was dressed in white overalls and looked slightly similar to the new immortal Peng of Joy Pavilion. Only, he had no facial hair on his chin and his face was ghostly pale as if it had not seen the sunlight before. Even the moonlight seemed dimmer in comparison. His white robes were dirty and it appeared as though they had not been washed in a very long time. Madman Wu did not give off dangerous vibes. However, Ji Yu Wei still maintained his vigilance. Mister, are you also a disciple of Joy Pavilion? Ji Yu Wei did not remember seeing this person. However, even if the disciples of Joy Pavilion had described him, Ji Yu Wei would not be able to recognize him. Perhaps. The white robed man answered absent mindedly as if he had not understood a single word of what the other party was saying. He kept staring at Shangguan Are you? Are you a master of the Shangguan family? Yes. Who are you? Shangguan Are you was not as wary as Ji Yu Wei. She had good feelings about this strange man who had just appeared. After all, this person had once spoken up for her. Then you know Master Yun? Yes, I do. Then can you help me ask him if Paro is still alive? I won't be alive much longer. I want to see him before I die. Paro? Like the bird? Who on earth are you? Shangguan are you threw forth a series of questions but that man in white had already turned around and left. He looked as ethereal as when he had appeared. Ji Yu Wei did not let Shangguan Ah Yu catch up with him. There had to be a limit to risk taking. It's best to keep a distance with the men of Joy Pavilion. Who is Master Yun? The Shangguan family had so many disciples. Ji Yu Wei had not heard of many of them. That's my third brother. Shangguan Gu's voice became as weak as the white robed man's. He was locked up by my father for many years. Ji Yu Wei had discovered long ago that there was a strange master in the Shangguan family. That had to be the third young master Shangguan Yun. The Shangguan family revolved around Lady Meng and was divided into two major factions. Only this third young master did not belong to any faction. He was also the least known. Tai Hanfeng was the subordinate killer of the third young master. However, that he was borrowed caused the eighth young master much anger. Tai Hanfeng never spoke about his former master. Shang Guan Yun was only an unremarkable name on the hit list. Apart from this, he was of no interest to Ji Yushan Wei. It was rather, Madman Wu who sparked his interest. Afterwards, he asked to learn more about this person from Chu Nanping. Madman Wu was originally named Wu Xingqing. He was in his thirties and was once a disciple of Immortal Peng. He had turned half mad very long ago. From morning till night he had been roaming about in Hope Alley. His mind would turn from clarity in one moment to confusion the other. He had only survived until now on the food given to him by kind souls. Chu Nanping knew all this. However, he was never a curious person and he had never cared about Madman Wu's background. Now that matters have gone so far, Ji Yu Wei did not plan to investigate further. He did not have the time. The men of Joy Pavilion did not come to take revenge. They did not wish to leave Hope Alley. That night, he escorted Shangguan Ayu back to Kuan society. On the way, the two scarcely mentioned Joy Pavilion. Shangguan Ayu realized that it was her brother's scheming plot and thus she did not want to discuss it anymore. Ji Yu Wei returned to his own room. There were several killers waiting for him. Only one had not returned from his vigil. Someone is causing trouble. Our plan has failed and we must think of a new one. Ji Yu Wei said. In this very evening, Shangguan Ayu should have died before his eyes. This was Wild Horse's idea. Slave Huan would lead the tenth young master to Ho Pali. He and Liu Hua would kill a random person from Joy Pavilion. Tang Ji's Kung Fu was the lousiest and he was unlucky. 
This would anger the disciples of immortal Peng and provoke them into killing Shangguan Ryu. Thereafter, the killers would seek revenge for their master. Later, they would get the chance to return to their former master. Under usual circumstances, killers have to die for their masters. However, Shangguan Ryu had not attained the title of master. Thus, she did not have such a privilege. However, this was still a dangerous plan and even if it succeeded, the killers could be killed by Lady Meng's wrath. Even so, they did not wish to continue serving a weak master. Kuan's society was weak and Shangguan Ryu did not have the will to fight at all. She would be killed by the ninth young master and the killers under her authority would still be dead when that happened. After thinking coldly and dispassionately through their options, they decided to take a risk. The person who was most at risk was Slave Huan. If his master had died, he would have had to assume responsibility that he could not escape from because he was always by her side. In reality, Ji Yu Shenwei accepted this role with the only caveat being Wild Horse and the other men would have to assassinate Shangguan Fei next. Wild Horse had agreed. As long as he did not have to be the one killing, he was willing to cooperate. This was a form of revenge for Master Yu. After the death of the twins, Ji Yu Shenwei could escape to his former master, Shangguan Enyu, to seek shelter and protection. Ji Yu Shenwei was willing to walk this tightrope for revenge. However, the incident that happened next made him think of a better plan. Coming to think of it, he realized that he had been a little impatient and had lost his level-headedness. The killers had landed themselves in a quandary. If they had wanted to continue to assassinate their master, they could lose their footing. Hence, they wished to give up. However, no one dared to be the first to raise this up for fear of being suspected of wanting to tell the secret. In the end, Liu Hua broke the stalemate. Wait. There must be an opportunity. Everyone must swear to keep this a secret. There are seven of us here. Whoever tells the secret would be the mastermind and the other six would have to concede. Liu Hua's suggestion was accepted. After the gathering had ended, Maid Lotus returned alone. Wild Horse suspects you. Ji Yu Shenwei knew that of course. He was regarded as Shangguan Ayu's confidant and he was always with her. It would seem as if he had wished to sabotage the killer's plan. Even if this plan succeeds, he would doubt me. Killers were not credible. This was the conclusion that Ji Yu Shenwei drew after becoming a killer. They had learnt too many dirty tricks and unscrupulous theories in Stone Castle. One day, they could be using it on their masters. Golden Rock Fort had thus come up with a strict rule, killers had to be loyal to their masters on the pain of death. Let's start now. I'm confident of pulling Luhua over to our side. Luhua had once tried to assassinate Maid Lotus but Ji Yu Shenwei firmly believed still in Maid Lotus abilities. The current problem did not lie in Wild Horse alone. They had to kill all four men in Wild Horse's faction at the same time. It's the only way. That could be the only way for now. The two were very clear that at this moment, Wild Horse was executing his plans to eliminate his enemies. He might also be contemplating getting Liu Hua over to his side. This was the principle of the killers. Even if the plan to kill Tenth Young Master had succeeded tonight, both parties would still have had to think of a way to silence those who knew about the plan. This could not be what Tai Hanfeng meant by safe killing. Not a single word could be leaked about the matter before it happened and not a single suspicion raised after it had transpired. Hence, both sides would have wanted to wait for the best opportunity to direct the suspicion to someone else. In the morning of the second day, the tenth young master got out of bed. She had no idea that the trouble of yesterday was an act of betrayal by all of her own killers. On the contrary, she felt that she had already escaped from her troubles and sadness and was ready to rally her house again for another fight. You must destroy Ku and society and let Shangguan Fei go running back to Stone Castle to complain to mother, she said to herself. 
As usual, the killers prepared their scheme. However, they no longer believed that this little girl could be a ruthless commander-in-chief. If the commander-in-chief showed any mercy, her subordinate killers would be in danger. Very quickly, the killers would get a great opportunity. This would allow them to kill their master and their accomplices at the same time. Chapter 202, Bribery Translator, Transan Editor, Transan Everything started from an unexpected invitation that the twins received. On the first day of May, in the Fairland Pavilion of the North City, Commandant Shonghang invited the master of the Horny Dragon Society, Shangguan Fei, and the master of Kuan Society, Shangguan Ayu, to a gathering. There was an unspoken rule on the invitation, the master of the society could only bring one servant. This was verbally delivered by the officer who sent the invitation. This invitation was unexpected because the commandant occupied a sinecure post. He had never interfered in the battles of South City. Moreover, on the surface, the twins had looked like they had reconciled. They wouldn't need an authoritative figure like him to resolve their rivalry. Surprisingly, the twins rejected the invitation unanimously. The stone castle soon sent men to remind the ninth young master and the tenth young master that it would be better to go to the gathering at Fairyland Pavilion. Out of everyone who knew about the invitation, Ji Yu Shenwei was the most surprised. He had talked to Shonghang several times. He had also been sending the basic salary of several thousand taels in his own name to Shonghang. Hence, he knew very clearly the nature of this commandant. This commandant would always avoid conflict and would not hesitate to direct his responsibilities to others. Getting involved in the twins' conflict was very unlike him. That evening, the two twins arrived at the venue on the invitation. This was the first time they met each other after the battle in the peach forest. They were both awkward and kept giving way to each other. They were so polite that they didn't seem like family members at all. Later, they both sat in separate corners and never looked at each other again. Both maintained vigilance and were scared that the other would be up to something. Ji Yu Shenwei happens to be Shangguan Ayu's servant but in front of his master, he had no right to take a seat. Shonghang hid his smile and nodded at him. He then started his long speech. Ji Yu Shenwei had seen Shonghang's ability to beat about the bush and speak nonsense. However, his speech was exceptionally long this time. After holding out for two hours, Ji Yu Shenwei finally fainted. He did not understand what the commandant had in mind. The twins had already lost interest. There was an expression of tolerance on their faces. If it hadn't been for the stone castle's hint on the importance of this meeting, the two would have left the gathering long ago. Ah, Lord Shong, please be direct. Was it the governor who sent you? Due to his relations with the Horned Dragon Society, Shang Guan Fei knew a little more about what was going on. Yes, yes. Shang Hung laughed and expressed his agreement. His being direct still took 15 minutes. However, what he arrived at finally was a simple message. Jade City had a high rank sinecure administrative official, the governor. A new governor was appointed every three years. The Central Plain, Norland, and Shulike took turns appointing the new governor. The current governor was someone from the Central Plains. His term was about to end. According to the usual practice, all the forces of Jade City had to send a protective talisman to him, which is just gold and silver. It was called the protective talisman because after receiving the money and relinquishing his duties, the governor would write a memorandum of praise when he returned to his country. He would praise Jade City for its peacefulness. This way, the big powers won't interfere in the matters of this city directly. So this is how it is. How much do you need? Commandant, just say the word. Shang Guan Fei had plenty of money and would not take this bribery to heart. However, the sum that Shang Hung said startled him. Oh, it's like this. In such matters, 
You have to be willing to donate and it depends on how much you are able to give. Of course, there are precedents. Take the 10th Young Masters Kuan Society for instance, donating 150,000 would be enough. The 9th Young Masters Horny Dragon Society has more power. I expect it to be perhaps more generous. If you don't have a problem, donating a million would be sufficient. What? The twins stood up immediately. Shangguan are you still owed slave Huan money and after much trouble, Shangguan Fei had managed to accrue hundreds of thousand tails. To think that it was still not enough. The two decided to use that money to expand their influence and strength. However, they did not wish to waste it on the governor. They didn't even know the governor's name or what he looked like. Why does the Hornied Dragon Society need to give that much? Currently, the territories of several masters from Stone Castle have all been merged with the Hornied Dragon Society's territory. Hence, if the territories were to be split, more could be donated. The twins finally understood what their brother meant. On the surface, he seemed to be relinquishing his power in the South City. In reality, he was exchanging it for a hot potato. Shangguan Ayu used all of her territory to exchange for Kuan society. It turned out to be a blessing due to a misfortune. No Shangguan Ayu flat out refused. I'm not giving either. Shangguan Fei was not very bold but he was not afraid of the officials in the Jade City. Shonghang was not angry and his face did not turn red either. He took his time and after much coaxing, he saw that the gathering could possibly end on a sour note. He took out his trump card. Ninth young master and tenth young master, let's not sour our relations. I'm only a messenger and to be honest, I won't be enjoying any of the silver so why am I so concerned? I've spent much of my youth in the western region. My kung fu and accomplishments aren't worth mentioning. However, I have accrued enough experience over the years. So, here's a piece of advice, don't be too hasty in your refusals. Ask around when you're back and solicit the opinions of others, especially the elders under your authority. If you don't trust me, you can always trust them. The twins did not trust anyone. Those elders handed over their money but not their authority. In name, they seemed to be subordinates of the ninth young master but in reality, they were still loyal to their former masters. The two muttered their retreat hastily. They scolded the governor as they went downstairs, regardless of whether he could hear them or not. After exiting the restaurant, the two siblings remembered that they were now enemies. They looked at each other coldly and left without saying goodbye. Less than three days later, the twins realized that things were not that simple. This protective talisman had to be paid and it should not even be a single tail short. Lady Meng had never interfered in the twins' matters directly. This time, she sent their confidence to visit the twins to tell them the importance of the bribe. In Jade City, Golden Rock Fort and the Meng family were indisputable rulers. In the western region, they also had considerable might and influence. However, there were several other higher powers in the world. Jade City had never belonged to any country for many years. It relied not only on killers and weapons, but also a large amount gold and silver. This a test for the twins. They had to raise enough tails for the governor. If they failed, Golden Rock Fort would help raise the remainder but the twins' abilities would be questioned. No one told the twins in advance that such a thing existed. Even to Lady Meng, this was something new. She vented her anger on the several masters. She questioned why the second, sixth and eighth young master had not reminded her of the bribe. Lady Meng forgot that it was her who had forced the young masters to give up their territory. The stone castle had its fair share of rivalries. This gave the twins another chance to prove themselves against each other. Kuan society was very poor. The fees that it received every month could only barely meet its expenditures. If Slave Huan allowed it, the hundreds of thousands left behind by Tai Han Phone could fill in the gap. In contrast, 
the Horned Dragon Society, even with its many men, was still short of two to three hundred thousand tails from their goal of a million. Shangguan Fei wanted to collect the protection fees for this month in advance. However, he was opposed by most of his subordinates. These people were originally the subordinates of other masters. They were still loyal to their former masters and came up with several reasons to oppose the ninth young master's plans. Shangguan Fei flew into a rage. The only thing he could do would be to fire a large group of machete men to save money. Both sides needed a large sum of money. Suddenly, victory no longer depended on who had the most men but in the party who could still expand after forking out the bribe for the governor. In this context, a great opportunity to make money presented itself. Xu Xiaoyi had been gathering intelligence for Ji Yushun Wei for a long time. Even though Xu Yang Wei made a promise with the killers, she quickly lost her initial enthusiasm and now places her focus receiving guests to earn money. This time, she was meritorious. This is a generous customer. I have to hold on to him tightly. No girl from Pleasure Alley should even think about snatching him away. As usual, Xu Yang Wei talked about her own business and later alluded to what Ji Yushun Wei was interested in. Once, he drank too much and had too much fun. He started speaking nonsense and completely forgot about it after that. He wanted to buy a grand mansion in the North City and even asked me to live there with him in the future. He didn't seem like royalty so I asked him where he got his money from. He laughed for half a day and finally said he was a robber. He retired and wanted to spend the rest of his life in safety. The robber who paid a visit to the wrong prostitute couldn't keep his mouth and he wrapped his arm around Xu Yang Wei and divulged all his secrets to her. A group of lucky robbers, about thirty of them, did not do away with the silver that they had robbed immediately. They hid the money which had amounted to half a million tails. The leader and several of his associates killed all of their companions, leaving only five behind. They had decided to retire in Jade City. Sending the untraceable silver to Jade City was too dangerous. They were very cautious of their peers and decided to send one person to the South City. That person's task was to find a reliable bank and negotiate the fees for depositing the silver. The bank had several branches throughout the western region. The robbers only had to deposit their silver at the nearest branch. They could go to the South City empty-handed and withdraw their money anytime they wanted. Half a million tails of white silver would be a godsend to the cash-strapped Cohen society. With this money, not only would the protective talisman not be a problem, even Wild Horse's plan of gathering a team of machete man could be achieved partially. A boastful robber would probably not stop at only showing off in front of prostitutes. Ji Yushun Wei spent a whole day gathering intelligence, which had almost cost a thousand tails. There were also several other gangs trying to get their hands on these 500,000 silver tails, including the Horned Dragon Society. Shangguan Ryu expressed strong interest in this. This sum of money could not only resolve the cash-strap situation of Kuan society but also deal a huge blow to the Horned Dragon Society. This was because Shangguan Fei had already regarded this money as her own treasure and had decided to use it to pay for the protective talisman. It was impossible to compete with the Horny Dragon Society directly. Shangguan Ayu thought of an idea. The whole Kuan society would pretend to be unaware of the money and the robbers. Xu Yang Wei received an order and had been arguing with a bunch of boisterous customers. She sent a piece of lamb to other prostitutes, getting a gift from Kuan society in return. Unexpectedly, the robber was immediately taken away by a famous prostitute sent by the Horny Dragon Society. In the following days, the Horny Dragon Society launched a series of operations, be it obvious or covert, to scare off other forces. Shangguan Fei wanted to obtain half a million tails all by himself. Ji Yushun Wei spent every ounce of energy to collect information. He wanted to know where the loot of the robbers was kept hidden and where it would be shipped to. 
This was definitely information that Kuan society did not know about. That robber had told Xu Yan Wei everything but kept the most important piece of information a secret. Shang Guan Ayu's plan was to follow the Horned Dragon Society and intercept the silver. The killer's plan was to take advantage of the fight between the twins in order to find out which master they should eliminate. Slave Huan and Wild Horse's plan was to eliminate their accomplices who were insiders while they killed their masters at the same time. Silencing the witnesses would bring peace. Chapter 203 The Village Translator, Transan Editor, Transan Slave Ching was drowning his sorrows in the wine cup, complaining about the unfairness in life. He had paid a steep price, money, time, flattery, face, but in the end, gotten nothing. Master Shangguan Fei did not hate him or like him, neither did he trust him nor suspect him either. In any case, he had become an easily overlooked butler doing the most trivial things. From the looks of it, he would never achieve big things in life. Hence, when the tenth young master approached him, he leaped at the chance of a new master immediately. He was not a killer and did not have to stay loyal for life. Moreover, he needed money. However, Slave Ching was not entitled to partake in the secrets but Shang Guan Ayu's request was also uncomplicated, precisely so that he could focus on the killers under the ninth young master. This was to let their movements be as conspicuous as possible. Shang Guan Fei would not mobilize his forces in person, but he would surely designate his most trusted killer to perform the robbery mission. On the fifth day of the fifth month, an important message came from Slave Ching. Nine killers had prepared eighteen horses to set off at three o'clock in the morning. Their destination was the west of Jade City. Slave Ching knew all these. However, he did not dare fish for more information. If Shang Guan Fei discovered something amiss, he would kill him. Before two o'clock in the morning, Shang Guan Ayu set out with seven killers. They had made a series of disguises before departing in order to fool outsiders into thinking that the main forces of Kuan society were still within the city. Chu Nanping walked around in circles outside an empty hut, pretending he was protecting his own practice partner. The little swordsman had not wished to do this but he was glad to have Xu Xiaoyi, once again, accompany him during surveillance. No matter who it was, it was impossible to rob the Golden Rock Fort from within. The five robbers had huge caches of money and were not prepared to bring their silver into Jade City. Hence, the target of the Horny Dragon Society killer must be outside the boundary. Ji Yushan Wei remembered that path along the boundary of Golden Rock Fort. He had been robbed at precisely that spot and turned into a slave. In addition, he had once followed Tai Hanfeng and robbed a rich master in a spot not far from there. The land to the west of the path belonged to Shulike in name but they did not station troops there. In reality, it had become an ungoverned territory and after the Giyu family of the Central Plain had been slaughtered, the number of roving bandits in that area had increased. To use this path to travel to Shulike city short in distance but posed a great risk. Giyu Shenwei guessed that the robber's treasure would not be buried here. Shang Guan Fei would also not choose to carry out his plan here. All the way to the north, past the mountain pass, it was fertile land as far as the eye could see. As one continued north, they met the unending grasslands that belonged to Norland and the Xiaowan Kingdom wedged at the foot of the mountain. The Xiaowan Kingdom was weak prosperous. Lady Meng owned a bank there and it was possible that the robbers kept their money there. Shang Guan are you? together with seven killers, split into four teams. The first team would hide in the vicinity of the mountain pass to survey the ninth young master killer's movements. If they had actually entered Shulike, they would send one person to report to Shangguan Ayu immediately and the other person would continue to observe them discreetly. Shangguan Ayu and Liu Hua were both in the second team stationed by the small road to the north of the mountain. If everything went smoothly, the two of them would see the nine killers but would let them go on their way. Wild Horse and another killer were in the third team. They lay the ambush in a road leading up to the cliff. 
that place was one of the best locations to spring an attack. However, they were to wait to see the silver before making their attack. Slave Juan and Maid Lotus acted as roving forces for the operation, shuttling back and forth between the three teams. They were to prepare for any unexpected emergencies that arose. Three days later, the first target that appeared was the big-mouthed robber. He had finished his task but had been held back by prostitutes for another two days. Eventually, he reluctantly left his warm hometown to return to his chief, saying how the glitter and riches of Jade City were alluring. He had to send the silver to Xiaoan City quickly before he could start living an honest life. He had kept his lips sealed and had not spoken about the silver to anyone. But being relaxed, he failed to notice anything curious about the palm imprint on the iron saddle of his horse. Yet, the hoof prints he left behind would reveal his whereabouts to his enemies. The two killers under Shangguan Fei followed closely behind while the other seven followed from a distance. Ji Yushan Wei and Maid Lotus were sandwiched between these two groups of killers. The robber did not enter the deep mountains but into a small village. The small village had over thirty houses who had constructed an earthen wall circling it. This was a courier station that stood exactly a day's journey on horseback away from Xiaoan City. The robbers had used this place to hide their money. Indeed, it was a clever choice. No one would have thought that this poor village would harbor half a million tales of silver. That night, the village was calm as always. The two groups of killers had hidden in their respective places, waiting for the cover of night to start their operations. Shangguan Ayu, to make up for the weakness she had previously shown, made a cold-blooded decision, when Shangguan Fei's killers had stolen back the silver, she would kill all of them. Even though the eight men of Kuan society were outnumbered by one, Kuan society's killers were much more highly skilled. The place of ambush was the cliff that Wild Horse had chosen. It was up to Slave Juan and Maid Lotus to mark the nine killers. Even when everything had been arranged to perfection, the outcome still came as surprise. The sky was very dark as Ji Yushan Wei crept quietly to the side of the village's earthen walls. He watched the movements of the nine killers, with Maid Lotus close by his side. He understood the men's tactics could guess their general plan of action. A killer first entered the village. In the day, he had disguised himself as a normal passersby, entering the village asking for a bowl of water. In so doing, he gathered some intelligence and when night fell, he wanted to confirm what his suspicions. When the killer came out of the village, the two other killers entered the village from two different directions. Their target was the small mud hut in the heart of the village. They were in charge of surrounding the mud hut and preventing anyone from escaping. Five other killers entered the village to deal with the five robbers. As long as this part of the plan succeeded, half of the operation would have been completed. The remaining two killers would wait outside the village walls to keep a lookout. These men were only ten paces away and Ji Yushan Wei and Maid Lotus quieted their breaths covering their tracks. From the looks of it, the operation would be simple and quick. The last step was for the killers to move the silver. The five killers entered the hut and not long later, there were muffled sounds of a blade slicing some cloth. It was faint, and only a person who was listening intently and was familiar with such sounds would have heard it. The two killers standing watch outside the village shifted slightly, as if breathing sighs of relief. A dash a heart-rending scream pierced the night sky and the chirping of insects fell silent at that moment, but quickly resumed. However, those killers froze in their place, without moving. The whole village heard the screams and a few houses lit up, but the lights were put out shortly after. However, someone ran out, boldly shouting, What on earth is happening? Who was shouting? Ji Yushan Wei looked at those two killers who were on watch, thinking how if he had been in their place, he would have run away long ago. The men on watch finally came to their senses. They prepared to retreat but it was too late. 
That villager who had run out to investigate the scream was carrying an assortment of weapons in his hands. And as he shouted at the top of his lungs as he ran to catch up with the killers. From two neighboring houses, men rushed out and blocked the killer's escape path. Three of the killers had escaped. Catch them alive. Someone ordered. The killers pulled out their sabers without a word, preparing to defend themselves to the end. The two killers who were responsible for intercepting the villagers had already been cut off. Weapons clashed and not long later, someone yelled, they are down. The two killers on watch pulled out their knives preparing to attack. They wanted to clear a path to escape but only after trading three blows, the two began to stumble like a pair of drunkards. They fell down onto the floor helplessly. How many have you caught? Four. I killed five. Okay. Get ready to depart immediately. We will use them in the sacrificial ritual to Long Feidu. This was a well-designed trap. The robbers had not numbered only five but ten. They brought out horses from the houses and prepared to leave the village. However, as the robbers were tending to their horses, Ji Yushinwei and Maid Lotus returned quickly to report the tenth young master, Kuan Society and the Horny Dragon Society have been deceived. There were no 500,000 tails of silver at all. That robber pretended to leak the secret in order to bait us. Who could it be? Shangguan Ayu was a little surprised. Her biggest rival was her brother Shangguan Fei but the person who set this trap could not possibly be him. Ji Yushinwei thought for a moment. He had seen something that prompted him to make a guess. It must be the swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain. Those robbers were equipped with long and broad big swords. Ji Yushinwei had seen them before and knew that they were the signature of the Great Snow Mountain tribe, especially Long Feidu whom the robbers had talked about. He was the swordsman who had previously died in the Tea Junction. Snow Mountain? Shangguan Ayu was even more surprised. Those boorish and arrogant swordsmen had never been good at conspiracy. Designing such an ingenious trap truly exceeded her expectations. There was not much time left. Ji Yushinwei knew the destination that the swordsmen had in mind. They were headed for the Tea Junction to worship Long Feidu. They would soon be riding by on their horses, towards the place of ambush prepared for them. What should I do? They are coming. They are coming straight away. Ji Yushinwei knew what the tenth young master meant. Should he save the nine killers? They the core of Shangguan Fei's power. Shangguan Ayu made a decisive choice. The Great Snow Mountain is Golden Rock Fort's enemy. We cannot let them succeed in their conspiracy. How many people do they have? How strong are they? About twenty-five. Their strength is unknown. Ji Yushinwei recalled meeting the swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain, Long Feidu, two years ago and remembered feeling that something was not quite right. They have knockout powder. We must be careful. The whole thing appeared very strange to Ji Yushinwei. The swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain not only crafted an elaborate plan but they also used knockout powder. These were two things that they thought beneath them. But Shangguan Ayu did not have time to consider these things. She ordered them to prepare the ambush immediately. Her target was about over twenty men. To the eight killers, this proved a challenge. The galloping sounds approached. The swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain, holding their captive, reached the destination. At about four o'clock in the morning, they entered the place of ambush. The horses trotted onwards, their riders oblivious to the ambush awaiting them. With a loud crash, several huge boulders fell from the sky. The team of machete men was thrown into disarray. Horses neighed and men screamed. These sounds of distress were punctuated by a sharp cry of pain. Someone had been hit by a boulder. Only one killer was on the cliff monitoring the ambush. The other eight were hidden below the cliff. 
Liu Hua was the first to attack. She fired three shots in succession and three men fell. The swordsmen reacted surprisingly quickly and quickly regrouped into their formation. They slapped their horses and retreated from onslaught of arrows. However, merely ten over steps away, they were hit by an attack from the side. Two killers rushed out and jumped over the head of the swordsman leading the charge. Two heads rolled. The killers continued running, their legs pumping furiously. The swordsmen were consumed with rage and they turned their horses to chase after the killers. This was the killer's strategy all along, to overwhelm the enemy even though they were outnumbered. They would kill and then withdraw in order to provoke the remaining machete men to chase after them. Thus, they would lure the machete men to the next place of ambush. The killer's plan was unfolding without a hitch when they heard a plaintive voice muttering weakly from the rubble. Please save me, I am the ninth young master, Shang Guan Fei. Chapter 204 A Second Dual Translator, Transan Editor, Transan Shang Guan Ayu did not understand how this could have happened. She had seen countless bloody scenes in Stone Castle and had never felt afraid. She even felt some enthusiasm towards violence. Before she had even learnt how to speak, she had already been in her mother's arms clapping and laughing at the killers. This pleased her father greatly. He had joked that this must be the real child of the Supreme King. She had killed people. She would stand on the stairs and watch as the flames engulfed the horned dragon society. She had witnessed people getting their heads cut off and had felt nothing in her heart. However, she couldn't even bring herself to kill a swordsman from the great snow mountain that she didn't even know. Every single one of her blows missed the vital areas of her victims. She couldn't bear to see a living creature lose its vitality and life force. When Master Yu had died, he had taken not only the friendship between them but also her ruthlessness with him. Now that her brother, Shang Guan Fei, had appeared amidst the rubble, she felt extremely flustered. He was the last person she had wanted to see, especially since they were engaged in a life and death battle. She could feel the killer's expectations of her and she didn't know if she could meet those expectations. The stones that fell from the cliff hurt several people and the remaining swordsmen were in disarray after their team was diminished by half. They stopped running after the killers. The remaining five to six swordsmen fled on their horses and the killers stopped chasing after them. The sky was brightening and Shang Guan Fei's desperate pleas continued. Sister, is that you? Come and save me. I am buried by the rubble. My legs. Shang Guan Ayu kept her sword. She felt very conflicted. She had to decide whether she was going to kill him. She felt a great irritation in her heart. If it weren't for her emotional turmoil, she would have discovered the danger behind her. She felt that something was amiss. Holding her blade, she turned around and saw one of her killers coming after her with a saber. This killer was one of her most trusted subordinates and he currently wanted to kill this unworthy master. Shang Guan Ayu's heart was like a heavy stone that dragged her down into the abyss. Although she still had time to block with her sword, her hands were frozen. At that very moment, she didn't think of her parents, Master Yu, Slave Huan, and those people who were close to her. She didn't even think of the good or bad times. The only thing on her mind was that death would be so terrible. Death had passed her like it did the swordsman. The killer who was determined to kill his master raised his saber high. However, his waist suddenly shuddered and he fell sharply. An arrow had plunged through his back and came out his chest. Liu Hua came over from afar. He still carried a bow. Her brother's cries for help still rang in her ears but, she heard nothing. What had happened was completely incomprehensible. She could only watch. Slave Huan rushed forward and whispered something that she was not able to understand. Wild Horse wants to kill you. Had Wild Horse really betrayed her? Shang Guan Ayu turned her head to look at the odd-looking killer. 
He had once been loyal to Master Yu and had been forgiven by Shangguan Ayu for killing other killers. Was he really going to kill his master? Wild Horse pulled off his mask. There was anger and confusion evident across his face. He gripped his sword and glanced at Liu Hua and Shangguan Ayu. He was angry that he had been betrayed by Slave Horn. The original plan was to use this opportunity to kill Shangguan Ayu and send the loot to the swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain. Because of this, they had let several people go so they could kill them afterwards as targets of revenge. As for Shangguan Fei, he was an unexpected prize. Yes, they had plans of dealing with Slave Huan after everything was over but never had they expected that Slave Huan would have acted first. What he didn't understand was why Liu Hua had chosen to support Slave Huan. Wild Horse himself was the real leader of the killers. He was also much more powerful than his opponents. Liu Hua had personally promised him that he would support him at the last moment, however, that turned out to be a lie. He had never been betrayed before so this act of betrayal caused him much pain. He could have pretended that he knew nothing about what was going on but his expression betrayed his thoughts. In this moment of indecision, Maid Lotus had already killed another killer and only one killer remained. He prepared to escape but was shot by Liu Hua. He fell amongst the corpses. Wild Horse was left to slave Huan. They had an unfinished duel to settle. Wild Horse raised his head. He would not flinch nor escape and he wouldn't feel guilty about the plot. He had never regarded anyone as his master in his heart and Master Yu was no exception. Even if he could speak, he would not expose Slave Huan's motives at this time. It was this slave who had betrayed everybody and what Wild Horse wanted to do now was kill Slave Huan. He had his chance. In the monthly test, he had dealt Slave Huan a blow with his dagger. If he had delivered a more powerful blow, he would have been able to save himself from this duel, however, Wild Horse was not exactly regretful. He gripped his dagger and walked towards his enemy. Ji Yushun Wei and Maid Lotus had talked and decided that Wild Horse was a greater threat than Shangguan Ryu. The Snow Mountain Gang's plan to exterminate the Tattooed Arm Gang had never changed and no matter how much Wild Horse apologized, they felt that he would strike and sabotage their interests eventually. On the surface, the two seemed nonchalant about Wild Horse's actions but secretly, they had already decided to strike before he did. Liu Hua was a wild card. This marksman would be a great ally to whoever whom he had decided to support. The reason that made Lotus had been able to win him over was simple. Because the Snow Mountain Gang was already very powerful, Liu Hua would not have made a discernible impact even if he had joined the gang. However, things would be different if he were to join the weak tattooed arm gang. He would be seen as a prized ally. Ji Yushun Wei also pulled his mask down. There was no need for him to hide his kung fu skills any longer. Though Wild Horse was not his sworn enemy, Ji Yushun Wei desired to have this duel. The scar that Wild Horse had left on him was still on his chest stabbed it was a deep wound that would never fully heal. Shangguan Ayu looked at her two most skilled killers approach each other coldly. A deathly shadow passed over her face as she lost all capability to make a decision. Strangely, both of them seemed to walk towards each other casually. It was almost as though they did not know each other at all. Even more strangely, killing each other did not seem to be on their minds. Time seemed to pass in the blink of an eye from the moment the first assassin fell. Shang Guan Fei was completely unaware of everything that had happened around him. Buried under the rubble, he kept calling sister over and over again. Shang Guan Ayu came to with a start. She had to save her brother now. Just as this idea had come into her mind, Slave Huan and Wild Horse attacked at the same time. Even though they were both schooled in the Kung Fu of the Golden Rock Fort, Wild Horse machete skills put the tenth young masters to shame. Practitioners like humans were flexible and creative, unlike Kung Fu techniques, which were inherently rigid. From one practitioner to the other, there were a hundred variations and levels. 
Wild Horse apparently belonged to the most elite. There were no major variations in his kung fu but he was incredibly quick. Slave Huan's sword skills left Shangguan Ryu gaping in astonishment. It was as if none of his moves even appeared in the textbooks and every blow seemed to echo a missing memory. The two most fleeting moments that were captured was Slave Huan gripping his sword and piercing his enemy. The two killers traded a blow and distanced themselves from each other immediately. Shangguan Ryu did not see their moves clearly, but she knew who won. Slave Huan looked at the wound on his shoulder. Blood flowed out from the wound but compared to the gash dealt by Wild Horse earlier, it was nothing of note. Wild Horse patted his neck. He wasn't dead, but he felt something sting him. There was no blood but he felt very strange. It was as though there had been something very important in him, something strung by a line, that had snapped. Wild Horse staggered backwards and huffed. Suddenly, a portion of his internal breath in his dantian left his body. He started to panic inside. How could Slave Huan have dissipated his internal strength? What kind of terrible wicked sword craft was this? Ji Yushan Wei was also panicking as he only had a set of sword craft. He hadn't been able to kill Wild Horse with a single blow. That only meant that in the next blow, he could die under Wild Horse's stagger. All of his opponents had died after a single blow. He had no idea whether he had destroyed Wild Horse's internal strength. Shangguan Ayu ignored her brother's pleas for the moment. She walked toward the killers and stood between them. She faced Wild Horse and stared him in the eye. You can go now. No Liu Hua shouted. His hand still held a bow. He was confident of killing the most elite of the Dragon Year apprentices. Wiping his enemy out at its roots was a principle that had been deeply instilled in him. Shangguan Ayu stared at Wild Horse. Let me decide. Let this traitor go. I don't want to kill anyone anymore. She was just like a child who had grown tired of a game. She had decided to withdraw, no matter how enthusiastic the others had been and there was no turning back. She was just a child. Ji Yushan Wei looked at her and secretly sighed a breath of relief. They were both fourteen years of age, however, unlike the disciples of Stone Castle, Shangguan Ayu could still return to being a child. This was different from how killers of Stone Castle could only run single-mindedly toward their death. Wild Horse couldn't say anything. Even if he had been able to speak, he would not thank the tenth young master. He was a traitor but he was also betrayed. This master was weak and stupid. She had failed to see how all her followers had ulterior motives. Not telling her anything would be the greatest form of punishment for her. As for Slave Huan, their duel had not ended. Wild Horse turned around toward the grasslands of the north. He put his saber into his scabbard and did not put up his guard. His internal strength became weaker with every breath he took. If someone had caught up with him, he would not have had the strength to resist. Wild Horse walked further and further into the distance. Maid Lotus looked at Ji Yushan Wei. This was a great opportunity. They could kill the twins and Wild Horse now while it was not too late. Then they could go support Shangguan and Yu. The eighth young master would likely protect them. He had long since lost trust in his former ally, Lady Meng. Ji Yushan Wei nodded his head. With the twins dead, they could have a firmer grip on things. They could prove themselves through this incident and continue climbing upward. Perhaps they could get closer to the Supreme King through Lady Meng. The Supreme King was the mastermind behind the Ji Yu family's death. Neither of the twins smelt betrayal in the air. Shang Guan Fei was almost shouting himself hoarse. Shang Guan Ayu finally came up to him. Sister, my dear sister, please save me, I will give everything to you and I will not fight with you over anything anymore. A huge boulder had landed upon Shang Guan Fei's right leg and at that moment, he had no chance of living. Why are you here? 
Shang Guan Ayu knew that she should be saving her brother but in her heart, she hesitated. I, I want to achieve something so that no one would look down on me and say that I am a weakling. Even the killers themselves were secretly saying this among themselves. Sister, they are all wolves all of them. If the master wasn't like a tiger, they would devour you. I am afraid, sister, I want to return to Stone Castle. Shang Guan Fei had only cared about his wound but did not realize that at that moment, Shang Guan Ayu was actually convinced. She had trusted Wild Horse so much, but he had betrayed her. Killers were all wolves. They would come attacking the instant their masters revealed some form of weakness. Shang Guan Ayu could hardly bear to look at the three remaining killers. At that instant, she could hardly tell whether they were human beings or wolves. Shang Guan Fei held his own leg and wanted to pull it out under the rock, however, he was afraid of the pain and his tears kept flowing down his cheeks. Sister, quick, save me. Let's get out here immediately. The person who set the trap was fourth brother. He is still in that village. He'll be coming for us soon. Chapter 205, Fraud Translator, Transan Editor, Transan The stone on Shang Guan Fei's legs wasn't heavy. He could have pushed it away if he was calmer and had a higher pain threshold. Three killers removed the stone and Shang Guan Ayu helped to sloppily bandage her brother's wound. Liu Hua went to fetch the horse which was hidden in the nearby valley and supported Ninth Young Master up onto the horse. I'll stay. All of you should go, Ji Yushan Wei said. They needed one person to stop the possible pursuit by the soldiers. No, we shall all go together, Shang Guan Ayu replied. She was even more determined than Slave Huan. Hurry up. We can't stay here as fourth brother will catch up to us any time, Shang Guan Fei said. He was more anxious than anyone else as he wanted to rush back to Stone Castle. Maid Lotus looked at Slave Huan and said, let's go. He knows what he is doing. He'll be fine. Both Maid Lotus and Liu Hua headed to the east while protecting the twins. Ji Yushan Wei looked to the west and saw a young master. He could kill him and he would likely not receive any punishment. After waiting for such a long time, he could finally take revenge. He left the horse to graze the field and stained himself with some blood from a corpse. Then, he lay beside another corpse and covered his face. He was holding onto his sword and stared at the sky. His mind was blank until he heard rapid clattering of horses. Dozens of well-dressed people arrived at the scene. Some of them had large swords. The rest not only had large swords with them, they were also equipped with a saber. A man jumped off the horse and said gruffly, Shang Guan are you? Please explain what's going on. The Great Snow Mountain isn't easily deceived. A cold voice spoke disdainfully. He felt that it was easy to fool the Great Snow Mountain. He said, can't all of you see that I've lost a few men? This is done by a top killer. If it wasn't for your mistake, Stone Castle won't have been alerted. If all of you had listened to me, there won't have been an accident. No, another voice retorted. He said, even though the killers had their faces covered, I feel that they are very young and there's another girl with them. They're as young as Shang Guan Fei's killers. Shang Guan Fei's killers had died among a heap of rocks and they were the four masked corpses. A swordsman walked over, pulled off a mask and said, all of them are children. What happened? How did they die? A swordsman who had fled back to the village made some strange noises in surprise and said, this is weird. When I left, none of them were dead. When you fled, the gruff voice said while emphasizing on the correction. It was shameful for a swordsman of Great Snow Mountain to flee for his life. Shang Guan Ruo scorned coldly. Even though their clan was almost wiped out, they were still bickering over such trivial matter. They might even start a brawl among themselves and some might just lose their life. The enemies need not lift their fingers to kill them off. 
He urged his horse closer to check on these corpses. Indeed, these killers had died not long ago. He said, these Ri Shangguan phase killers. He finally understood. The twins came here before and they managed to catch. The corpse was alive. The horse let out a warm damp breath. Ji Yu Shenwei seemed dazed, but he wasn't using his eyes to locate the most important enemy. The key of 29 styles of swordsmanship was to stab at the same target from different angles. Even though Ji Yu Shenwei was lying on the ground and his target was far from him, it didn't affect his attack maneuver. He attacked quickly. He couldn't even get a good look at fourth young master Shangguan Ruo. After the attack, Ji Yu Shenwei headed straight for his horse. Just when he was making his escape, he felt that someone was chasing him. Ji Yu Shenwei was guarded against this assassin as every young master of the Shangguan family had one black masked assassin protecting him. Ji Yu Shenwei needed more time. This was one of the minor holes in the sword's craft of death scripture. After one attack, he had to regain his internal breath. If his next opponent was weak, there wouldn't be any problem. If his opponent was strong, he had to let his internal breath complete one grand circulation before attacking again. He didn't continue running forward. When he jumped, he left behind some space. He returned back to his original position just when his toes made contact with the ground. Ji Yu Shenwei brushed past the black masked assassin. That emotionless mask resembled the Grim Reaper. No one had the time to attack. Shangguan Ruo was sitting on his horse motionlessly. He looked indifferent and it seemed as if he was detached from the world. He seemed uninterested the fight happening before him. Several killers and swordsmen had yet to recover from that fake corpse incident. They held on to their weapons but they had yet to pull it out. The fight happened too fast. In the still background, they were the only ones moving around. They exchanged blows but no one could get a good look at it. The youth leapt forward, then one drop of blood fell to the ground. A moment later, the killers and swordsmen had just pulled out their weapons. The youth leapt forward again and there were two more drops of blood on the ground. The killers and swordsmen's horses raised their front foot. The youth jumped onto the horse, which was grazing. There were three drops of blood on the ground. The black masked assassin fell forward just like an unstable wooden stick. The great snow mountain swordsman shouted. Those who were nimble had thrown out their throwing knives at Ji Yushinwei. Ji Yushinwei lied flat on the horse's back and galloped away. Both the killers and the swordsmen looked at Shangguan Ruo and waited for his instructions. It was after when the youth made his escape that they realized the motionless golden rock fought fourth young master was dead. Ji Yushinwei's only regret was that he didn't cut off his head. He caught up to Shangguan Ayu and the others at the mountain pass. Is it successful? Shangguan Ayu asked. Yes, Ji Yu Shenwei nodded. I'll explain everything to Stone Castle. Okay. Ji Yu Shenwei had personally killed a young master. Tenth young master was the only one who could resolve this matter. Even though the killers had lost their respect for tenth young master, she was still the favorite child of Supreme King. The four of them traveled for days and they returned back to Jade City after two days. They realized that there were rumors spreading all around Jade City. The whole city heard that the twins of Stone Castle were ambushed by Great Snow Mountain swordsmen and were killed. The Supreme King was furious and was gathering all his killers to attack Great Snow Mountain. The twins survived. Many people were shocked and some were greatly disappointed. Lady Meng immediately sent her men down the mountain to inquire about the situation. She sent Dr. Sun from North City to treat Shangguan Fei's legs. She rejected her son's request to return back to the castle because it was a crucial period. Even if he broke both of his legs, he couldn't return home before the end of his trial period. 
The loyal servants wouldn't deliver the bad news hence Lady Meng wasn't able to learn about the real status of the twins, let alone knowing that her son had lost his fighting spirit. Shang Guan Fei isolated himself in his North City residence. The first thing he did when he recovered was to send Slave Ching to make peace with his younger sister. He was willing to give up all his terrority and join Kuan society. In return, he wanted his sister to protect him. Shang Guan Fei had lost eight killers. The only surviving killer was the one who guarded Jade City. He was worried that he would be assassinated as his ruthless brothers were capable of doing anything. He would rather give up everything as this would prove that he had given up on the contest for power. On the surface, Shang Guan Ryu's state seemed to be better as she did not look frightened. However, the daughter of Supreme King had become sick of killing people. Only three killers knew about it and they would not reveal this secret. She stayed in South City and sent envoys to Stone Castle. She bore all responsibilities including the killing of fourth young master. Her intention was to protect Slave Huan. As a result, she had built up an unprecedented reputation. The battle for the throne has begun, the residents of Jade City whispered excitedly. Everyone wanted to converse with older citizens as they wanted to know the details of the previous war. The incumbent Supreme King was a tough character when he was young. All those who went through the previous war supported this ruthless young master. In order to be the Supreme King, he had to be cruel towards his family. Tenth young master had a good start and she could be the first female ruler of the fort. Those who were insightful disdained these ignorant comments. They shared their views to those who were genuinely interested. They said, it's too early to start the war. The incumbent king is wealthy and young. Who dares to challenge him? Who has the capability to fight for the throne? It's even more ridiculous for a female to be the supreme king. Even if the supreme king will allow it, thousands of killers won't agree to it. Look, this accidental event won't lead to a war. Fourth young master had died in vain. This minority was certainly correct. The so-called battle for the throne didn't occur. As fourth young master was Lady Meng's rival, his death would greatly weaken first young master's influence and he would not be able to counterattack. Lady Meng hoped that the twins could launch a large-scale revenge. However, Shang Guan Fei isolated himself in his room and no one could fathom Shang Guan Ryu's thoughts. Tenth young master took over her brother's terrority. Kuan society and horny dragon society merged once again, however, it didn't seem as impressive as it looked. This meant that she had to look after 1.15 million tails. The three killers helped her carry out her duties. Ji Yu Shenwei leveraged on tenth young master remaining authority and brought twenty of the best machete men with him to cover all of the strongholds in South City that belonged to the young masters. Even though these strongholds technically belonged to the twins, they were controlled by the other young masters. They not only refused to hand over their control of the strongholds, but they also refused to pay the monthly salary in advance. On every occasion, Ji Yu Shenwei would bring an extra blade and would place it on the supervisor's table. He patiently explained Tenth Young Master's order to the supervisor, Either you die or you hand the stronghold over to me. The first to surrender was the stronghold of Fourth Young Master. As their master had died, those who survived did not need to stay any longer. After withdrawing from the stronghold, they joined Kuan society and the remaining tales were handed over to Ji Yu Shenwei. The strongholds of the other young masters took a tougher stance and they resisted fiercely. Things went smoothly when Ji Yu Shenwei killed a supervisor. Before anyone could detect the change in tenth young master, Ji Yu Shenwei wanted to make use of the opportunity to expand his influence by using Kuan society as leverage. He remembered Wildhorst's plan, which was to build a team of machete men and he planned to execute it. Once Kuan society managed to accumulate 1.15 million tails, he had formulated some ideas on how to spend the money. He was ready to confront the money collector. Chapter 206, 
Wei Family Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Shang Guan Ayu allowed her killers to act freely by leveraging on her authority. Ji Yu Shen Wei realized that he made a wise move of not killing Shang Guan Ayu at that point in time as this was the best opportunity to act freely without the need to bear much responsibility. In the eyes of outsiders, Stone Castle's tenth young master seemed to become stranger, tougher and more ruthless as though she wanted to take over the entire South City. However, only three killers knew the truth. Shang Guan Ayu became fearful and she was unable to overcome this ordeal. On some occasions, she wanted to stay away from killing people. On other occasions, she became overcome with ambition and wanted to do something extraordinary. This was the main reason why she stayed in South City even though she did not do much there. The killers knew what they needed to do. Maid Lotus stood by Shangguan Ayu's side so as to prevent other machete men and servants from learning about Shangguan Ayu's emotions. Lu Hua played the role of a shadow guard and protected her master secretly. Slave Huan focused on expanding the influence and power of Kuan society. The three of them reached a consensus. Even though their master was depressed, they would want to build a strong front. Although Ji Yu Shen Wei didn't really trust Lu Hua, both he and Maid Lotus became more vigilant so to prevent further complications. Wild Horse strategy was useful. Ji Yu Shen Wei revisited those influential old swordsmen, especially those who were more reputable. He recruited the best machete men through their recommendation and they ensured Ji Yu Shen Wei of the machete men's loyalty. Ji Yu Shen Wei didn't hire stragglers. Through this method, it not only ensured the stability of the society, but also built up multiple forces within the society. This prevented any party from dominating in the society. After Ji Yu Shen Wei gathered ten teams, which was approximately three hundred machete men, the behavior Kuan society caught the attention of many. Some praised its actions, some became alerted and still others were baffled. The first who visited them was Commandant Xiong Heng. As usual, Xiong Heng made merry. He then hinted that Kuan society had to hand over the protective talisman, which was 1.15 million tails, in a few days' time. However, he felt that Kuan society had been spending much money recently and it might not have much left. Please be assured, Lord Xiong. Please assure Lord Governor when you get back. I'll ensure that everyone is happy. Zhang Heng left without worry. He visited again once every two or three days. He would come for a chat. On some occasions, he would head to Xu Yenwei's place to stay for the night as if he was an evasive supervisor. Ji Yu Shenwei investigated the origin of the governor. However, not many people in South City knew about the governor. He could only obtain some information from North City. The incumbent governor came from the central plain. His surname was Wei and his name was Song. He came to the western region to broaden his horizon. Unlike Xiong Heng who stayed in western region after he stepped down, Lord Wei would return back to central plain after three years. He would then likely be promoted to duke. Ji Yu Shen Wei didn't care much about it initially. After a few days, he suddenly felt that the name Wei Song sounded familiar. He lived in the Central Plain for twelve years. As he was too young then, he could only remember a few good friends' surnames, but none of them surnamed Wei. He thought, since Wei Song was the emperor, he might have known his father Ji Yu Lun. It was normal to have a little impression. He did not have a good impression of the governor. When Wei Song was in power, it was one or two months after the annihilation of the Ji Yu family. He had never heard of Master Wei seeking redress for the citizens of Central Plain. Master Wei was not as righteous as Marshal Yang. He had to rely on himself especially when it came to taking revenge. He regarded the governorship as a form of influence and he could use this influence to suppress Golden Rock Fort. It was less than ten days till the return of the protective talisman when a famous man visited Jade City. He caused much trouble for Ji Yu Shen Wei, 
but he reminded Ji Yu Wei of his past. This man was Governor Wei Song's son, Wei Lingmiao. His name sounded feminine, but he was very handsome. He was more famous than his father, especially in South City. The first time Ji Yu Wei heard about him was through Xu Yang Wei. Xu Yang Wei became excited when Wei Lingmiao was mentioned as though both of them were old friends. However, neither of them had met before. She said, I was little when he visited Jade City. I knew nothing. Potbellied Buddha wanted to marry me off but he couldn't find any way to do so. Sigh. That was my only regret. If Master Wei wanted to marry me, I would now be living at the Central Plain. Ji Yushin Wei couldn't help but snort. As Wei Lingmiao was a lustful person, his love for Xu Yang Wei would be short-lived. He laughed, you would probably live in one of the brothels in Central Plains. What about it? I'm a prostitute. I would be better off staying anywhere else instead of this city. Upon mentioning about South City, Xu Yang Wei anger began to boil. She continued speaking after she vented her frustration. She said, by the way, Master Wei is rumored to be young, handsome, humorous, romantic, rich and generous. Compared to him, those poor machete men are nothing. Ji Yu Shen Wei snorted again. The wife was obviously rich. Their bribes amounted to millions and the entire Jade City had to accumulate four to five million tails so to bribe the governor. If you have the ability, you should make Master Wei spend a million tails on you. HMPH. Do you think that I'm incapable and not worth a million tails? Your crippled master said that if I could control my temper I'll be the best prostitute in Pleasure Alley. I can control myself in front of a gentle master. She heaved a sigh. I don't know if I have a chance to see him. I may be able to send you to him. Really? Xu Yang Wei replied. Her eyes glittered and jumped up as she almost embraced her master. However, I'm afraid that you will follow him back to Central Plain. Our three-year pact has yet to expire. That's a small matter. I can compensate you. Furthermore, Xiaoyi can stay behind. Xu Xiaoyi was engrossed in the conversation. Upon hearing this sentence, he frowned with his brows and said, Sister, you're too heartless. You're deserting me here if you leave Jade City. You can find me at Central Plain after three years. By then, I would have bought you a house and chosen a few wives for you. Xu Xiaoyi laughed, I would only want the house. I would rather choose my own wife as I don't trust your judgment. The siblings got happier just by thinking of it. Xu Xiaoyi hadn't forgotten of his good friend and said, Little Chu, you should come with me when time is ripe. You have no reason to stay here. Chu Nanping listened intently. He appeared indifferent as though he couldn't manage to understand. He said, No, I want to stay with Ji Yushan Wei to practice heartless swords. What if I go? You won't go. I'll kill you first. The conversation was getting off topic. Ji Yushan Wei interrupted, I didn't say that I'll definitely send you over. Xu Yang Wei frowned and was about to throw a tantrum. She then let out a sweet smile and said, Mr. Huan, please don't play with me. I know you have certain conditions. Say it and I'll agree to all of them. In fact, Xu Yang Wei was already chosen. Even though Wei Lingmiao hadn't arrived at the city, the person who was responsible for receiving him had started making preparations by finding the best prostitute in South City. Xu Yang Wei was highly recommended especially by 5th Young Master Meng and Commandant Xiong Hong. They all had praise for her. It's very simple. I want to know all kinds of information about Master Wei, such as his temper, hobby and schedule. Xu Yang Wei blushed and tilted her head slightly. Her big eyes glanced to one side as though she didn't want to answer the question. She appeared slightly embarrassed. This was how she seduced men. She whispered, do I have to tell you what he does? 
What do you think he does when he is with me? Ji Yu Shenwei took Chu Nanping with him and left immediately. He was uninterested in Wei Lingmiao and knew that Wei Lingmiao was finding a way not to pay bribes. Similar to the most conservative killers, Ji Yu Shenwei hated lustful people. Killers like Tai Hanfeng were of a special kind and they were not respected by other killers. One of the influential people from North City who was in charge of receiving Wei Lingmiao was fifth young master Meng Mingxia. He finally recovered from his grief of losing Master Yu. Half a month ago, he resumed making merry at South City. Ji Yu Shenwei visited this enemy who always wanted to kill him and agreed to let Xu Yang Wei serve Master Wei. Meng Mingxia changed slightly. He became more tactful and less arrogant. He had also lost his infatuation. He said, Ah. Master Wei is an interesting person. The person who received him during his last visit was my older brother as I was too young then. This was the second time Ji Yu Shenwei heard such a story. He couldn't help but become curious. He wondered what kind of person Master Wei was as he was so well liked. It was two or three years ago when Master Wei was playing a lot tricks in the city. Do you still remember the marriage of Stone Castle's eighth young master? He came just before that. I heard that both Master Wei and eighth young master had planned to take a good look at the daughter of Big Head Kingpin. They want to know if she was as beautiful as what the rumors said. I'm not sure if they have succeeded. It was a pity that Marquis Gao died. Both of them are best friends. Ji Yushinwei was able to guarantee that Master Wei didn't succeed as the daughter of Big Head Kingpin would have screamed so loudly that the entire Golden Rock Fort could hear if someone saw her. Meng Mingxia received Slave Huan politely and enthusiastically. He even personally sent Ji Yushinwei him out. It was as though he wanted to end the rivalry between both of them. He said, Slave Huan, we're old friends. I hope you won't linger on the past. I wouldn't dare. Fifth young master thinks so highly of me. Mingxia chuckled. We became friends after we exchanged blows. Now that you're owner of half of South City, both of us should plan and prepare well for the reception of Master Wei. Fifth young master Meng treated a slave as his brother. Ji Yu Wei was flattered and replied, Fifth young master Meng should call the shots. I'll listen to your orders and serve you. The meeting should have come to an end, but Ji Yu Wei felt that he had overlooked something very important. He then remembered and asked, Oh yes. As the governor hadn't stepped up to his position when eighth young master got married, why did Master Wei visit Jade City then? The question seemed slightly abrupt. Meng Mingxia was stunned momentarily and thought about it. He said, I don't know. He probably helped his father to manage the outpost. Oh, I had an impression. It was rumored that he came to fetch the bride, but he didn't take the bride with him when he left. He brought back many concubines though. Ji Yushinwei had a good laugh with Mingxia over this, then he left. He realized why he had an impression of Wei Song and Wei Lingmiao. Wei Lingmiao was supposed to be his brother-in-law and the Weiss family was supposed to his in-laws. Chapter 207, Heart of the Lake Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Memory was like a dog eager to please its owner. As long as you something to chew on, it would come back with something in its mouth. Ji Yushinwei had a strong feeling that he had met the Weiss before, but he couldn't remember the exact details. He doubted his memory. To him, even though he spent nearly three years working in Stone Castle, it seemed longer than a lifetime. Recollecting the events that occurred three years ago was harder than crossing the widest river alone. But he still believed that he would get a few basic facts right. He had only been six or seven years old when his sister Suelan got married. He knew nothing, only to blindly address him brother-in-law. Until he realized that his sister had married into the Wei family rather than his brother-in-law joining the Ji family, he had little impression of his brother-in-law and had no intention to get to know him. 
Ji Yushin Wei was unfamiliar with the name Wei Ling Miao. However, he was convinced that his prospective in-laws were the wise. He had a niggling sense of familiarity towards Wei Song. Someone had once mentioned this name and he even felt that he had seen this name before. The reception for Wei Lingmiao would be a gathering for the upper class of Jade City. Fifth young master Meng had overestimated slave Huan status. Kuan society had to attend this gathering but fifth young master Meng would never allow a slave-born killer to stand in the same room with the other noblemen. Shang Guan Ayu was uninterested in such gatherings and asked her brother to take her place. Shang Guan Fei was willing to do his sister a turn but he had a small wish. He hoped that through this gathering, his brothers would no longer hate him anymore. If that worked out, he would swear that he would not vie for the position of supreme king. The gathering was held in the early summer of mid-May at the body garden in the Meng residence, North City. Ji Yushinwei attended the gathering as the bodyguard of ninth young master. This was the first time he met Master Wei Lingmiao, who was supposed to be his brother-in-law. There was a benefit of being a bodyguard, he did not need to socialize or drink with the guests. Shang Fei was the youngest among the noblemen, however his gloomy expression and flustered actions made others feel like he was aged and that something was wrong with him. There was definitely something wrong with Shang Fei. His leg, which had been crushed by a rock before being cured by a doctor, was still slightly disabled. No one could detect anything when Shang Fei walked slowly but when he walked faster, he seemed unbalanced. From then onwards, he had developed a habit of looking at people from the corner of his eye. Unlike other noblemen, Shang Fei remained behind the table at all times and did not greet any faraway visitors. He was uninterested in the guests, be it the governor's son or those ambassadors who were only interested in having fun. He cared only about his personal safety and he suspected that his sister had sent Slave Huan to monitor him instead of protecting him. After hearing so many rumors, Ji Yushin Wei was disappointed when he saw Wei Ling Miao. Master Wei was only about 24 or 25 years old. He was tall and handsome, but other than that, he did not seem to have other talents. He was not as wanton and unrestrained as the others had described. Instead, he was gentle and elegant. He greeted everyone coolly and even stopped momentarily at ninth young master's table and greeted him. The banquet began in the evening. Apart from the fact that several noblemen were drunk, everything seemed normal. It appeared that this would be like every other boring and insipid party. Around nine o'clock at night, several older noblemen left and Wei Lingmia dismissed his followers. Then, the real party began. Marquis Gao was a womanizer and died for love. We are saddened yet envious. Everyone, let us toast him on this special occasion. This was the first toast made by Wei Lingmiao this evening. Everyone stood up. The atmosphere seemed heavy when they paid tribute to the Marquis, who had died young. Master Wei led everyone in the toast and all of them smashed their cups on the floor. Lao Sai, bring out all the prostitutes. It's so boring. Master Wei's words swept away any vestiges of the gloomy mood and everyone cheered. The noblemen had not attended the gathering because they wanted to please the governor, but because they wanted to see what kind of tricks the flirtatious master would bring from the central plain. Lao Sai was fourth young master Meng, who was the older brother of Meng Mingxia. Both of them were old friends. He slammed the table and said, damn it. Delay any longer and those prostitutes would have become old maids. In the blink of an eye, the gentlemanly master transformed into a crude lecher. Pairs of strong men, each carried gigantic plates with a naked woman on lying atop of every plate. There were nineteen of them, one for each of the remaining nineteen guests. After the gigantic plates were placed in the middle of the hall, the strong men retreated. Apart from women, there were also wine jugs and cups on the plate. The women smiled invitingly, in all sorts of seductive poses to attract the attention of the noblemen, especially Wei Lingmiao. To win his favor, 
each woman tried her best to stand out from the rest. Everyone was staring at the women. Then, another batch of women entered the hall and danced among the plates. They slowly took off their clothes and remained with the other women. Crash! A cup from one of the noblemen's hands fell onto the floor. There was then a round of applause. No one was interested in the food in front of them. Even Shang Guan Fei, who was uninterested in women, wore a lustful expression and could not help grunting. Ji Yu Wei suspected that Ninth Young Master was trying to blend in with the others. He had no business in the hall, so he quietly left. He headed to the lake and stood silently by the fence. The moonlight was bright. The famous colorful lotuses of Body Garden closed up during night time and they looked like little unlit lamps swaying peacefully on the surface of the lake. There was a huge contrast between the noisy hall and the peaceful lake. It was fortunate that sister didn't marry him, if not I would have had to kill him, Ji Yushun Wei thought. His heart felt as tranquil as the lake. Meanwhile, the performance in the hall was still going on. Once a batch of women exited another would enter. It looked like many noblemen had prepared some entertainment. It looked to be a wild night of debauchery. A group of women chatted as they walked past, excitedly discussing the nobles whose attention they had caught. Ji Yushunwei had nowhere to hide so he just stood at his original position and pretended to guard the Meng residence. He gazed the little boats floating at the center of the lake. Hey, Yang Huan, why are you here? Someone had recognized him. Ji Yushun turned his head, saying, Oh, nothing. It's chaos inside and I'm technically not a guest. Xu Yang Wei was covered in a piece of thin clothing. Her face seemed redder than usual, which could be because of too much powder or from performing too hard. She replied, That's true. You must have felt uncomfortable watching the others choosing women. If you want, I can play with you. Xu Yang Wei batted her eyelashes and laughed. She was in a good mood and did not care about the killer's gloomy appearance. She asked, Did you see me just now? Ji Yushun Wei shook his head. He really had not seen her and all the women looked similar. It was difficult to distinguish each of them. Although admittedly, he was a man just like any other and it was difficult to pay attention to only the face. Master Wei had taken a fancy to me. I dare say that he will sleep with me tonight. Yang Huan, let's meet again at Central Plain. Xu Yang Wei spun around, not caring that her body was bare under the moonlight. Laughing, she left. She was one step closer to reaching her goal and had even dared to call Mr. Huan by name. This prostitute with the tragic backstory was certainly optimistic. Ji Yushun Wei looked at her retreating back and couldn't help but laugh. However, he didn't believe that Wei Lingmia would take her with him when he returned to Central Plain. That master was a womanizer and he surely would not be enamored by a prostitute. The ruckus from the hall became louder, as though some nobleman's lusts could no longer be contained. The sound was similar to what one heard along Pleasure Alley. The sounds of animals in the heat. Servants rushing around. The chilled of the moonlit air. The ethereal beauty of holy lotus flowers. Ji Yushun Wei felt like he was standing between the two contrasting worlds. He missed his blade and sword. It was forbidden to bring weapons into the body garden and he crouched, rubbing blades of grass between his finger as if trying to conjure something out of nothing. A bunch of fools, a lazy voice said. This man leaned against the fence as he sized up the young killer. Ji Yushun Wei was taken by surprise and did not know how to respond to Master Wei. He hesitated for a moment, dipped his head and said, Master Wei, why did you come out alone? No reason, Wei Ling Mia replied as he pursed his lips and whistled signaling the little boat in the center of the lake. He said, it had been years since I came here. I thought there would be new people in Jade City but it looks like nothing has changed. Even though the people are different, they still use the same old tricks. 
prostitutes nowadays are not as hardworking as those in the past. Master Wei had seen much. Surely you would obviously not be attracted to these cheap tricks, Ji Yushun Wei said. He thought Xu Yang Wei would feel disappointed. Cheap tricks can be alluring but only in moderation. Few women knew this and even fewer men. Everyone is just wasting their life, just like pigs and dogs. Ji Yushun Wei found that he could not maintain a conversation with Master Wei. They were on different wavelengths. Fortunately, the boat docked so he need not reply to Master Wei. The captain was a young woman dressed in rags. Despite being casually dressed, her familiar smile revealed her true identity. She, too, was from South City. Wei Lingmiao went to the pier and boarded the boat with the help of the woman. Then he turned back, come with me to and watch the moon. Let us stay far away from them. Me? Ji Yushun Wei replied. Ji Yushun Wei was only a bodyguard but had had a fortuitous chance of speaking to Master Wei. He felt that he was not worthy to even be invited onto the boat, let alone play on it. Yes, why not? A killer is also a person. Are you not drawn by this beautiful scenery? Ji Yushun Wei's heart skipped a beat. There were numerous bodyguards in Body Garden but he was the only killer. Wei Lingmia must have known his identity when he said that. Then, Ji Yushun Wei remembered the 1.15 million tales and thought that this invitation could be related to that. Hence, he boarded the boat, preparing to fight it out with Master Wei. The young woman pushed the boat from shore and Wei Lingmiao entered the cabin. He then took out a bottle of wine and two ceramic bowls. Half sitting at the bow, he closed his eyes and hummed a little tune. Ji Yushun Wei instinctively took up the bottle and poured the wine into the two bowls. He knelt at the side while waiting for Master Wei to ask him about the money. Suddenly, flute sounds could be heard from the stern of the boat. It was in harmony with Master Wei's humming. Evidently, there was a songstress on board. The boat circled around the reflection of the moon at the heart of the lake, disturbing the lilies. They seemed to be shaking their head in dissatisfaction. The music stopped. Wei Lingmiao opened his eyes and smiled at the killer. He asked, How is your owner? Ji Yushun Wei almost punched Wei Lingmiao's handsome, arrogant face. Master Wei, who came from Central Plain, had almost became his brother-in-law. He had gotten tired of playing with all the prostitutes in Jade City and he was now interested in Golden Rock Fort Tenth Young Master. To him, the name Ji Yutsuelan had probably never existed before. Chapter 208, Roping in Translator, Transan Editor, Transan Wei Lingmiao had heard of the Golden Rock Fort's Tenth Young Master. The last time he visited Jade City, Shangguan Ayu had been a teenager, and hence, he had been uninterested. Now that he was back in Jade City, he had heard many stories about Tenth Young Master. He was unconcerned about who would be the Supreme King, but wanted to get to know more about this extraordinary 14-year-old ruler of South City. She's all right, Ji Yushun Wei replied indifferently. He had worked out a plan on how to mention the money but was not expecting to talk about the tenth young master. Wei Lingmiao quirked his lips and smiled. The smile was gentle but flamboyant, attracting the glance of the female captain. I have met your master before. During eighth young master's wedding, she was running around in boys' clothes because she wanted to see how the bride looked. I wanted to as well and both of us worked together to flip over the bride's veil before eight young master. However, we failed. Who would have thought that there was another thick veil underneath? Ha ha. Ji Yushun Wei had not expected Wei Lingmiao to know Shangguan Ayu. He replied, the eighth young master must not have been very happy. Who knows? At that time, the eight young master was socializing with all the big shots from the western region and he probably did not even notice us. The eighth young mistress probably didn't know who we were. Ah, it's funny to think about it. G. 
Ji Yu Shenwei was fuming. The marriage of Shangguan Enyu and the massacre of the Ji Yu family had only been approximately one month apart. The Wei family must have heard of this tragedy but Wei Lingmiao still had the mood to tease the bride. The eighth young mistress still wears a veil, Ji Yu Shenwei replied casually, as if making a side point. I guess her good reputation was overstated. If not, why would the eighth young master rather stay in the desert and not go home? I heard that Shengguan Ayu was growing more and more beautiful. His comments seemed lustful. Ji Yu Shenwei was quiet and did not reply. He felt that Shengguan Ayu had not changed much. Apart from the fact that she had grown slightly taller, her appearance remained the same. Wei Lingmiao smiled again as he picked up the wine jug. He said, you are a loyal killer. All killers are loyal. Ji Yu Shenwei replied. Even as he spoke those words, he felt hypocritical. Several of them had discussed how to kill the twins not long ago. Wei Lingmiao shook his head and did not say a word. The conversation was still about Shangguan Ayu. Wei Lingmiao said, I saw the ninth young master just now. Both of them are twins but the tenth young master must look different from him by now. Not quite the same. Wei Lingmiao looked relieved. That's good. He muttered. Several small boats approached them. The noblemen in the hall who have discovered that their main guest was missing had caught up. Miawa, why did you abandon us? The girls are crying. Meng Mingxia said. Meng Mingxia and Wei Lingmiao were like old friends when they first met each other. Meng Mingxia learned from his older brother quickly and called Wei Lingmiao by his nickname. If we were to talk about tears, I believe this lake is filled with women's tears. Women's tears. This is a good idea. Let me come back with a whip and I'll increase the size of the lake. Lao Wu, I thought you would be faithful. Weren't you once deeply in love with a female killer? I have said before, that if there's a fifth young master in the Meng family, the women will feel blessed. I never thought that you would be so ruthless. Meng Mingxia shouted at Shang Guanfei, who was on another boat. Master, can't you see? Miao is interested in your killer. Give Master Wei your killer as soon as possible. Before the arrival of Wei Ling Miao, Ji Yu Shen Wei was observing the expressions of the two siblings. Meng Mingxia might have either forgotten about Master Yu or become more mature as he did not show any trace of hatred but instead, acted affectionately to Shang Guanfei. Shang Guanfei was afraid of water and held onto the handrail of the boat tightly. He grumbled. What's good about a killer? His body is full of scars. Your hands might get hurt touching them. Everyone became quiet. No one could tell if the ninth young master was joking or being sarcastic, but everyone started laughing when Wei Ling Mia laughed. The atmosphere eased up. At dawn, the party ended. Ji Yu Shen Wei did not know which women had got picked to serve Wei Ling Mia. Both he and Shang Guan Fei left early. Once they reached home, Shang Guan Fei sent away all other slaves and questioned Slave Huan. Why did he come to you? We were talking casually. We hadn't talked about much before all of you arrived. Shang Guan Fei did not really believe Slave Huan. Both of them knew each other's secrets after all and both of them were cautious of the other. He said, you are a killer. It's fine if you play sides within these walls, but collude with an outsider, it guarantees your death. I've always been loyal to Golden Rock Fort. My guess is that Master Wei just wanted that protective talisman dot. Shang Guan face stopped asking. The one million tales of silver troubled him greatly, as though it was a mountain that was constantly pressing onto him. It was not easy to have got rid of them, he did not want anything to do with them anymore. The banquet for receiving Master Wei lasted for three days and each night was similar. Wei Ling Miao seemed to be uninterested in the money. Instead, he was always looking for opportunities to ask about the tenth young master. However, G 
Ji Yushun Wei always gave perfunctory responses. Wei Lingmiao would probably know that, in order to get close to Shangguan Ayu, he would have to get past Slave Huan. Thus he was not bothered by the killer's cold attitude. Instead, he responded with sincerity. On the last day at Body Garden, Master Wei treated Ji Yushun Wei extremely well. After horsing around for three days, Master Wei finally got down to business. Commandant Shonghong, who was in charge of the meeting, invited the ninth young master over to discuss a private matter. The ninth young master naturally understood what this private matter was. He calmly admitted the merger of the Horned Dragon Society and Kuan Society and mentioned that the tenth young master was calling the shots. Should there be a need to discuss any further, the best person to speak to was Killer Yang Huan. Just like that, Ji Yu Wei had a private meeting with Wei Lingmiao and Shong Heng in a study in Body Garden. Manager Yang, the day after tomorrow is D Day. I believe the tenth young master has prepared the money. Shong Heng said frankly. Ji Yu Wei shook his head and said, No, you will have to wait for another month. Shong Heng was not easily ruffled and continued smiling. He looked at Wei Lingmiao. That flirtatious master appeared indifferent and was rifling through the books that no one had read before. He did not say a word. Zhang Heng shook his head. Manager Yang, this is not what we have agreed on. Ji Yushun Wei wanted to push the governor's boundaries and said, Well, you can't say that. At this juncture, I have no other choice. I don't have enough money and I can't produce money out of nowhere. Shong Hung's smile was almost gone. He had made a few deals with the young killer previously, and had even received his monthly basic salary. He felt that Yang Huan was sensible, but he had never thought that Yang Huan would breach a contract. He said, if the tenth young master has difficulties, we can't help her either. However, she could ask Stone Castle for help. This seemed like a threat. Ji Yushun Wei played dumb and replied, the tenth young master will never ask anyone for help. Either you reduce the amount, or you wait for another month. There's no other way. Does the tenth young master want this? Zhang Heng asked. He was surprised and angry as Yang Huan had embarrassed him in front of Master Wei. This is all her idea, Ji Yushun Wei said with certainty. In fact, Shangguan Ayu did not even care about this matter at all. Slave Huan had been given free reign to handle this issue. The atmosphere became still. Ji Yushun Wei had planned to aggravate the governor and then observe the reaction of Stone Castle, so that he could find out how the two parties communicated. He wanted to know how much influence this obscure governor had. When the massacre of Ji Yu family had occurred, Wei Song had not appeared concerned. There must either have been unforeseen circumstances or some other reason. Golden Rock Fort was an organization of killers. In the GU family massacre, the client that requested the massacre remained unknown. GU Shen Wei felt that the relationship between Governor, Wei Song, and his family was a major clue. Wei Lingmia suddenly turned around and absently said, it is plausible to wait for another month. Master, Zhang Heng said. Even though Zhang Heng would not pocket the bribe, he was subject to the governor and did not want to bore the blame of acceding to Ji Yushun Wei. Wei Lingmiao waved his hands as though he knew what he was doing. He said, but, there are some conditions. What conditions? Ji Yushun Wei asked coldly. Wei Lingmiao coughed sharply and Shong Heng immediately retreated. You should know what I'm thinking about. Ji Yushun Wei knew what he meant but Ji Yushun Wei did not want to help. Ji Yushun Wei said, I'm just a killer. I know nothing except for killing people. Wei Lingmiao laughed. He was not as easily provoked as Shong Heng. All right, he said, we can delay the transaction if you help me kill a person. Who? Ji Yushun Wei asked casually. He had not expected Master Wei to actually come to him with such a request. I've never considered that. Let me think about it. 
I'll let you know in two days. I believe that killing people is easy for you, right? I'm ready all the time. Ji Yushun Wei said. Though nodding his head slightly, he wished he had a knife with him so that he could have threatened Master Wei for the truth. Ji Yushun Wei returned back to South City, but Xu Yang Wei remained at Body Garden. She might have stood a chance of serving Master Wei, but the competition was fierce. There would be many prostitutes left behind and no one dared to boast that she had captured Master Wei's full attention. Ji Yushun Wei noticed a carriage in front of the entrance of Kuan society. Several servants were moving presents which were wrapped in silk to the courtyard. Accompanied by Maid Lotus, Shang Guan Ayu was practicing her writing in the study. She saw Slave Huan entering and asked, What is going on? Wei Ling Miao has been sending items over every day. Isn't he here to ask for money? Why is he being so generous? He likes you, master. Ji Yushun Wei answered honestly. Shang Guan Ayu was shocked. Maid Lotus withdrew backward, as if she could blend into the wall and disappear. Bold and shameless fella. Aren't all the women in Jade City enough for him? Ji Yushun Wei had expected Shang Guan Ayu to react with such vehemence. Then, an idea sprang up in his mind. Master Wei will not give up so easily, he said. Even though Shang Guan Ayu had lost her will as a killer, it hardly meant that she was a weak or easily deceived woman. She commented. Oh really? Then let's do something difficult so that he will give up. He is the son of the governor. So what? I didn't even want to hand out the protective talisman. It's time to teach the father and his son a lesson. It surely is. Ji Yushun Wei thought. But Ji Yushun Wei wondered that to what extent the lesson should be. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Shang Guan Ayu's threat about teaching the Wei father and son a lesson was merely due to a slip of her tongue. Although the governor was an insignificant figure, the central plains that he represented was colossal. This piece of information was undoubtedly known to the tenth young master. If it were not for Wei Lingmia doing something so outrageous, she would have lost her patience. The philandering young master Wei Lingmia came to the stone castle from tens of thousands of miles away. He did not fancy any of the famous prostitutes in South City, instead, he had fallen for the tenth young master. As if he was obsessed, he had sent presents every day to ask her to grant him an audience. This matter was somehow leaked and was quickly spread throughout the city. You mean the stone castle's tenth young master? The leader of the Leviathan Society? That little devil that kills people without blinking an eye? The overlord that owns half of the businesses in South City? Please stop joking around. This would have been people's initial reaction. It can't be wrong. Why don't you go to, to the front gate of the Leviathan Society and see for yourself? Boxes upon boxes of gifts, all the treasures are from the central plains. It's a shower of gold, you know? A shower of gold. Even if you gather all of the famous prostitutes in South City together, they wouldn't even be worth this price. The person who spoke these words one day had their tongues cut off. Since then, no one dared to compare the tenth young master to prostitutes. That day when Wei Ling Miao personally came to visit the tenth young master in South City, many onlookers followed him and were blocking the entire street. Everyone praised in their hearts that this young master Wei was truly one of a kind in this world. He had a daring passion and a unique taste. He actually fell in love with not just a female killer, but also the leader of killers. The people still remembered the last person who had fallen in love with the female killer. What happened to the Meng's fifth young master wasn't worth anyone's envy. Not only did the women who loved him all died, but also a large sum of money had been squandered away. The money even somehow ended up paying for the wedding dress for the Shangguan family's twins. Young Master Wei's appearance and demeanor were many levels higher than that of Meng Mingxia, therefore as he arrived on horseback, he was greeted with a commotion of praise. 
The guards held the people back and pushed the dense crowd apart to form a narrow passage. Wei Lingmia did not care about the crowd's gazes and indications. With a pensive smile on his face, he behaved as if he was strolling through the courtyard of his own home. His dismount from his horse was as smooth as floating clouds and as natural as flowing water, prompting cheers from the crowd. A personal servant entered to announce his arrival. The gatekeepers were shocked by young Master Wei's demeanor as they stared at each other uneasily and their smiles became strained. Soon, the personal servant was kicked out. His whole body was forcibly rushing towards Wei Lingmiao at the gate, one of the gatekeepers reached out and pushed the concealed human figure away, allowing the servant to land safely and then immediately withdrew. Wei Lingmiao knocked the fan into the palm of his hand with a sigh before raising his voice and shouted, Tenth young master, an old friend has come for a visit, why not come out and meet me? Shang Guan Ayu held a saber with a dissatisfied expression. Under the deterrence of Maid Lotus, she did not charge out to slay him. This young master Wei was indeed a scoundrel. Brazenly arriving without prior notice, it was as if she was the one waiting for his arrival. Ji Yushan Wei went out to order the machete men to drive the onlookers away and to persuade Wei Lingmia to leave. The tenth young master can't meet with any guests today. Young master Wei, please pardon us. A small setback could not sway young master Wei. Report this to the tenth young master, from now on, I'll come tomorrow and every day after. Then he vigorous winked at the killer, as if there was some tacit secret. Young Master Wei left, but Shang Guan Ayu's rage did not diminish. She finally made the resolution to punish this womanizer. The next day, Wei Ling Miao came again. This time, the front gate was tightly shut, even servants were refused entry. Leaving his gifts at the door, Wei Ling Miao left with a sigh. For five consecutive days, young Master Wei came every single day. Although there were fewer and fewer onlookers, he became more and more spirited, and even his gifts were becoming more and more unique. One evening, he also hired a fireworks performance, even those who were located at the top of the Golden Rock Fort Towers could see it. On the sixth day, young Master Wei did not show a disheartened expression, but he felt that his life was becoming somewhat tedious and some adjustments needed to be made. Aside from the tenth young master, which other women in South City were worthy enough for Wei Lingmiao to visit them in person. There was only one. Not anyone could just summon South City's top prostitute and treated her like smoke in the air. Pleasure Alley has never forced anyone to stay. The prostitutes were regularly rotated in and out, even those who became famous were forgotten. Only Xiao Fengchai had been standing firm as the most famous for the longest time. She also became the leader of the cosmetic community within Jade City. Those who never had the chance to see Xia Feng Chai would often say, that prostitute was just ordinary, and she isn't very young anymore. If it wasn't for the Meng family's investments, who would line up for her services? Fame is hard to achieve alone. After hearing such words, those who had seen Xia Feng Chai always sneered with a sense of superiority and held their heads high as they took their leave behaving in an aloof manner in front of their peers. Wei Lingmiao had met with Xiao Feng Chai before. The last time he visited the Jade City, he had stayed at Xiao Feng Chai's home for ten days, becoming the man who stayed with her the longest. You should know that Xiao Feng Chai picked her guests. If she disliked you, even if you offered a fortune, you could only sit with her for a chat and to drink tea, wanting to stay any longer was dependent on one's nature. Therefore, Wei Lingmiao felt that coming here would give him great comfort. He became unhappy when a mate had made such a distinguished guest like him wait. However, Wei Lingmiao quickly relaxed because Xiao Feng Chai was Xiao Feng Chai after all. It was worth the wait. When he first came to visit, he was also not brought upstairs immediately. Like everyone else, he had to go through three trials. The first trial was money. Xiao Feng Chai picks people, not money. If you want to see her, 
the monetary gift can't be less than a thousand tails. Adding a few fashionable trinkets would increase your chances. Wei Lingmiao had already prepared a monetary donation of 3,000 tails with a dozen or so gifts that were rejected by the Leviathan Society as his offering for the first trial. The second trial was the person. After drinking tea downstairs for a quarter of an hour, Wei Lingmiao was finally invited to the living area of the second floor. The decoration here was extremely luxurious, rugs from the western region, calligraphy paintings from the central plains, Buddha statues from the Fourth Truths Temple, sandalwood from the ocean country, everything one could wish for was on display, there were even a few maids that were national beauties strolling around. If the guests, upon arriving on this floor, revealed even a hint of being dazzled by these things, then they could forget about seeing Xia Feng Chai herself. What had Wei Lingmiao not seen before? The decor on this floor was of no interest to him, except for a calligraphy painting. He stood in front of this masterpiece, knowing full well that Xiao Feng Chai was watching him closely. The third trial was patience. Wei Lingmia drank tea for another half an hour on the second floor, reluctantly suppressing his frustration. Being treated like any other first-time guest was tolerable, but this was his second time visiting, did their tender affection from his previous visit mean nothing? Wei Lingmia thought in this heart that a prostitute was just a prostitute after all, forever using the same know-how. The wait was finally over when two stunning maids rolled up the beaded curtains, and Wei Lingmia knew that he could enter. The woman sitting by the window was the Xiao Feng Chai from his memory. It had almost been three years since he had last seen her. Even without makeup, her beauty had barely faded. She was wearing an elegant light yellow dress, stilling looking out the window as if she hadn't heard anyone coming in. After smelling the refreshing fragrance in the room, all of Wei Lingmia's dissatisfaction immediately vanished, and his heart swayed. Feng Chai. Bang! Wei Lingmia felt pain from the back of his head before everything went dark. His last thoughts were, prostitutes are heartless. Capturing Wei Lingmia was no easy task. Coming to a place such as South City, he had dozens of guards by his side with quite a few experts among them. Without blood splattering the streets, forget about even getting close to this noble young master. Since Xiao Feng Chai has seen many things in her life, she turned with an apathetic expression on her face. The three young killers did not even faze her. Even during the times of Leviathan Society's fiercest war, no one dared to run amok at her place until today. Which one of you is the tenth young master? I am. Shang Guan Ayu took a step forward. Since the other side has already guessed her identity, there was no need to hide it any longer. She pulled down her mask to show her aggressive appearance. Ian, you're quite a beauty. The rumors were true. Xiao Feng Chai smiled. You're also very beautiful, no wonder Miao has been infatuated with you. It's just his wishful thinking, Shang Guan Ayu said bitterly. The other two killers were still covering their faces, one of them was a woman, and the other was a man. Xiao Feng Chai stopped smiling. Men aren't allowed in here. These words being said by a prostitute were somewhat ironic and hypocritical. However, what Xiao Feng Chai said was the truth. These three killers snuck in here from the neighboring Xu Yenwei's home, which frightened her. At this time, she wanted to end this game. Ji Yu Shenwei heard of many rumors from Tai Hanfeng involving Xiao Feng Chai. In particular, Incidents of her helping the wealthy hide their golds and silvers and could not help suspect that Wei Lingmia was here for that very purpose. You don't mind us stealing away your customer, right? Shang Guan Ayu took a liking to this prostitute, because of her being so cooperative and saving her a lot of trouble. I don't mind, and I don't want to see him today. I have no taste for insincere guests. Want me to humor him while his heart is somewhere else? I don't do such things, therefore he's not my guest. Also, don't use the word still because others will misunderstand. 
A naughty smile flashed on Xiao Fengchai's face as if a big sister was having a conversation with her younger sister. Shangguan Ayu did not get angry. She also had a smile on her face as she left with the killers and the captive. Although Xu Yang Wei was still in North City, her bedroom was empty. The distance between Xiao Fengchai's window and the rear window next door was about 10 feet apart. Naturally, this distance was not tricky for killers from the Golden Rock Fort. They used grappling hooks to hook onto the awnings, and with a slight swing, they were inside Xu Yenwei's home. The security guards on duty were unaware of these events, still envying their master's luck with women. Wei Lingmia made a few noises as Ji Yushan Wei put him down on the floor, and was about to wake up. This was planned by Ji Yushan Wei after bribing one of young Master Wei's followers and inquired about his hobbies. He concluded that Wei Lingmia was definitely going to visit Xia Feng Chai. Shangguan Ayu, Maid Lotus, and Slave Huan had waited in Xu Yenwei's home for three days, just for this opportunity. What now? Ji Yushan Wei asked as he and Maid Lotus stared at Shangguan Ayu. Shangguan Ayu was holding her saber but she did not want to kill anyone, and she had no plans to kill anyone. This person is filthy, so he really needs a good wash. Wei Lingmia woke up and groaned. He opened his eyes but discovered that a black cloth was covering them, and his mouth was stuffed with a rag. He became very frightened, thinking that he had come to Jade City in pursuit of ambitious plans but he would only end up being killed for no apparent reason while in a brothel. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Wei Ling Miao had been thoroughly washed, but it was unclear if he was cleaner than before. Tied to a log, and floating down the river. His eyes covered, and mouth stuffed, unable to see nor call out for help. He didn't know where he was, and could only to feel water all around him. It seemed as if he would be washed off the cliff at any moment. The guards finally discovered the governor's son in the river and anxiously jumped in to save him. Wei Lingmiao had suffered quite an ordeal and luckily returned to North City safe and sound. After calming his nerves, he declared the adventure to be a mere lover's quarrel. The falling flowers are yearning for love, but the heartless brook ripples on. This old line isn't untrue at all. Those who wanted to laugh at him were thoroughly impressed. They thought that young Master Wei was indeed one of a kind, and Stone Castle's tenth young master was merely spoiling the fun. Even if young Master Wei never saw the real abductors with his own eyes, and also as Xiao Fengchai claimed she had no relations with the culprits that broke into her home, every resident of Jade City knew the truth full well. Wei Lingmia forgave the tenth young master, but he severely punished his guards. For dozens of guards to not notice their master abducted was of the highest negligence of their duties. Now he had a new plan, to protect his own safety and to get closer to the tenth young master, Wei Lingmia used his deep connections and influence within the rock fort to put in a request for a killer to join his security detail, precisely the killer, Yang Huan. Of course, Shangguan Ayu refused the request. He knows that you participated in his abduction, he must be using this ploy to exact his revenge. Before the one million or so tales of silver arrive, he wouldn't do anything to me. Ji Yushan Wei was willing to accept the request because he knew that there was some valuable information he could get out of young Master Wei. The first thing Wei Lingmia said after seeing the killer was, who else better to protect me from killers than a killer? One status is more useful than a killer, Ji Yushan Wei replied indifferently. If Wei Lingmia were not the son of the governor, his corpse would have sunk to the bottom of that river by now. Wei Lingmia did not mind the killer's retort, for he had a purpose of his own, with the tenth young master's most trusted killer by my side, the little lady would not dare to play any more tricks on me, he thought. Ji Yushan Wei became Wei Lingmia's temporary personal bodyguard. His first task was to escort young Master Wei to pay a visit to all the big shots all over North City. During the day, young Master Wei was refined and courteous with an elegant demeanor, while in the evening, 
He went to South City to fool around charging through the brothels and forcing himself on the prostitutes, even those who were already entertaining other guests. Furthermore, he persistently brought gifts to the Leviathan Society every day to woo the ten young master. Ji Yushin Wei only understood one thing, Wei Lingmia didn't have any specific preferences in women. He was merely an enthusiastic collector, in search of all the unique treasures he could find, ranging from their height to their sizes, even from their beauty to their wealth. He wanted to explore them all. Ji Yushin Wei's hatred grew deeper and deeper for this person who had almost become his brother-in-law. Although he never had a chance to bring up the past, he never thought that Wei Lingmia would take the initiative to do so. After not being able to see the tenth young master for a while, a few days before deciding to leave Jade City, Wei Lingmia decided to pay a visit to the Four Truths Temple, to burn incense and pray to Buddha for a spiritual wish. He disappeared for the entire day, he did not drink alcohol, or sleep with any women. After bathing in several incense baths, his whole temperament had gone through a transformation, seemingly spiritless, gaining solemnity, and even had a trace of extraordinary refinement. That evening in the body garden, Wei Lingmiao sat quietly under the pavilion admiring the moon. The only person with him was the killer, Yang Huan. He had not spoken for a while, but as soon as he opened his mouth, he asked a very unexpected question, rumor has it that you have a sword, and on its hilt is engraved a woman's name. It's of no significance. Ji Yushin Wei slightly bowed. There was indeed the character Yun carved on the hilt of his sword, and it was the name Maid Lotus had before she became a slave. The two used this method to avert the eyes and ears of others, discreetly. Hey, whatever reason it may be, even if you admit to it or not, maybe you haven't discovered it yet, it's still significant. Young Master Wei was seemingly more energetic discussing love and woman. For example, for the person you think you love, you're willing to go through innumerable trials and hardships for them, to lose complete interest after. And the person you've been trying your hardest to forget is always showing up in your sights, even in your dreams and unable to tell if she is there or not. Ji Yushin Wen could not understand Wei Lingmia's feelings at all. He felt that he had no such conflicting emotions. Love is love, and hate is hate, they are completely distinct. The tenth young master is probably not fond of these words. Ha ha, you're indeed loyal. I wasn't talking about her, but thinking how the current the young master is quite cute but also fierce. Maybe like other women after marriage, she'll be like a little bird that rests on a man. Ji Yushin Wei did not answer and gazed upon the lake. Wei Lingmia kept staring at him, you know, I should hate you. I was only following orders. Ji Yushin Wei thought that young master Wei was holding a grudge for the abduction. No, that was just a harmless joke. Don't worry about it. Were you born in the Golden Rock Fort? No, I entered the Rock Fort only a few years ago. Then you must know that the Golden Rock Fort killed a family named Ji Yu. Sounds familiar. Ji Yu Shen Wei nearly choked as he answered. The Ji Yu family's daughter was my fiance, and we were supposed to wed in a few months. I've always thought that if she was still alive, I'd be a completely different person than I am now. I'm not saying I wouldn't like other women anymore, just that I'd be more responsible and know what I want. She was a good girl, dignified and sincere since her youth, and also kind-hearted. I've never met anyone like her since. Wei Ling Miao confided in an unfamiliar person, who was also a killer, with these words that seemed to have been lying within his heart for a very long time. Seemingly disheartened with a bit of anger, his gaze on the killer sharpened. Golden Rock Fort killed my woman, not only do I not seek revenge, I cozy up with them. Don't you think I'm a joke? Must killers take revenge as well? Killers do not take revenge, only kill. Ji Yu Shenwei forced himself to calm down with an old saying of the stone castle. Like any other old saying, you can deceive any layman. 
Wei Lingmio recited the sentence twice, appearing to have yielded sentiment. He then smiled, revenge is to have your enemy feel pain, but to be killed without pain, isn't that right? Yes. Ji Yushan Wei's agitation within the depths of his heart was becoming more and more violent. If not for the many years of suspicion within the stone castle, he would have confessed everything. The Wei family had intentions of revenge. Ji Yushan Wei understood this through Wei Lingmia's implications. However, he did not understand the reason why the man had said all of this for him to hear. He was a killer of the Golden Rock Fort and was one of young Master Wei's targets for revenge. You're a special killer. Wei Lingmiao seemed to be roping in the killer, and gradually nearing the real topic of interest. Commander Shong has said many things of you. Commander Shong overpraised, I can't even assemble a protective talisman. A trivial matter. Wei Lingmiao shook his head, you have your own beliefs unwilling to be strung along by others. Moreover, you're always thinking on your feet, this is true ability. A person like you ought to be exercising your talents on a much bigger stage. Ji Yushan Wei suddenly realized that young master Wei's whole purpose was not to get close to the tenth young master but to convince and recruit killers to rebel against the stone castle. Had the Wei family really been quietly preparing to take revenge for the Ji Yu family? The stone castle is big enough for me, as a killer. Ji Yushan Wei decided to feign ignorance, and Wei Lingmia did not attempt to dig any deeper. Instead, he changed the topic with some miscellaneous small talk, even speaking of the next day's trip to the Four Truths Temple. Killer, pick some lotus flowers on my behalf. I want to give them to my late fiancé, her ashes rest within the temple. This is the only thing I can do for her at this time. There was a hint of ridicule in Wei Lingmia's tone, and Ji Yushan Wei did not like it. However, hearing the whereabouts of her sister's ashes caused his heart to skip a beat. You should bring her back to the central plains. Then she wouldn't be able to see the things I'll do in Jade City. The conversation came to an end. Ji Yushan Wei no longer inquired and Wei Lingmiao no longer explained. Young Master Wei and the killer's thoughts were not so different from the beginning, this man still loved his sister and had never forgotten in these three years, continuing to plot his revenge. The influence of the Central Plains was powerful, but it was beyond the reach of Jade City. There were only a hundred garrison troops stationed in the city, symbolically meaningless, and not a single soldier more for thousands of miles. Ji Yushan Wei understood the difficulties of the Wei's father and son at the time. Wei Song was the governor, so he naturally could not act on his personal feelings, just like Ji Yushan Wei himself, who had to change his name and live in shame before his gained any strength to exact revenge. What methods will Wei Lingmiao use for revenge? He doesn't know Kung Fu, so he could only rely on the central plains. If only the Central Plains would send their soldiers. Ji Yushan Wei contemplated more and more until he felt waves of emotion surging within, deciding to clear up this matter before young Master Wei left. The next day, Wei Lingmia led an immense force out of the city toward the Fourth Truth's temple, followed by Commandant Zhong Hong. He was probably ordered to purposely approach the killer and strongly suggesting that they have a chat in private. Ji Yushan Wei's suspicions had doused his enthusiasm. Governor Wei Song was retiring from office and young Master Wei wanted to use this sudden turn of events to try and bribe the killers from Stone Castle. However, this was no easy task. He must be careful with his family's plans for revenge and not risk any chance of exposing himself. Only a handful of people could enter the Four Truths Temple. Ji Yushan Wei took out a four-colored lotus flower he picked and stayed outside the mountain gate with the other guards. He kept thinking of the words that young Master Wei said over and over. Amitapa, benefactor, you have come. Ji Yushan Wei turned around in surprise and saw a lofty monk. He later recognized that this was Monk Lianye, who was highly skilled in Kung Fu. Usually, he did not separate from his senior, Lianhua 
so seeing him alone was a rare occasion. Monk, how are you? Not good, not good. Senior brother is bedridden, how can I be good? Master Lianhua is sick. Ji Yushenwei had entrusted the great monk to translate the death scriptures, however he had forgotten about this matter. He did not expect the monk's death to near so soon. Unfortunately, there was no one else in this world that could read the scriptures except for him. Yes, benefactor, follow me. If you accept senior brother as your master, you can practice the breaking obsession and remove your killing desire, fulfilling these two masters' wishes. I'm sorry, I have matters to attend to and cannot leave. Lian Ye roared and frightened all the guards around, causing everyone to think that he was an eminent monk of the temple. No one dared to step forward to calm him. He's almost dead, what else is more important? Follow me. Lian Ye suddenly took action, Ji Yushun Wei had prepared for it. However, he did not carry his usual saber this time. The saber he borrowed temporarily took a bit of getting used to and was slow. The monk's kung fu still surpassed his imagination. With one finger, he successfully blocked his acupoint. Ji Yushenwei's body slumped and was already on the monk's shoulders. Lian Ye pushed the crowd away, and with giant strides, he ran towards the top of the hillside of the temple. All of the guards were dumbfounded, and no one stepped forward to intervene. Instead, they all whispered to each other and felt that killers of the Golden Rock Fort were nothing more than this.